A 2024 Sprint Car status check today as we run through a bunch of the top teams and talk about what we know about their plans for next season. Plus more midget racing for Kyle Larson, news from Tyler Courtney and Kyle Cummins, and last night's midget action at Merced. Let's go. It's Wednesday, November 22nd. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Things with the Sprint Car Silly Season seem like they've slowed a little bit, so I wanted to do a, a bit of a run-through, see where we stand right now uh, for next season in terms of the big teams and drivers and what their plans are. We did have the Chris Windham to Vermeer news this week, which wasn't something I certainly expected to happen, so as we move forward, there could be other surprises. The big ride that remains open, at least publicly right now, is the Crouch Motorsports 11. They moved on from Corey Eliason at the end of the season and have yet to name a new driver. Some things are settled and others aren't, so I thought we could do a bit of a reset here heading into the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we're going to start here, kind of go down through the outlaw standings and then branch out from there. Obviously, Brad Sweet is taking the Napa 49 to high limit. There will be some change there, though, as tire guy Andrew Bowman announced he's leaving Casey Kane Racing to go work in NASCAR. I'm assuming Eric Prutzman and Ty Wolfgang will return there as his other crew members. Uh, KKR has been become a bit of a pipeline in, uh, into NASCAR for crew guys here over the years. The other KKR machine and boss man Casey Kane's nine car will likely do a pick and choose schedule next year. Probably a lot of the high limits slate, but plenty of outlaw shows as well because of his sponsorship commitments. We know David Gravel is back uh, on tour with the Outlaws in the Big Game 2 car, and all signs are pointing towards a return to JJR and the Outlaws for Carson Macedo. That JJR 41, though, will have some change to deal with itself, uh, as both Nate Repitz and Clyde Knipp have left their crew guy roles with that team. Uh, so uh, Philip Dietz looking for a couple of replacements there. Geo Selzy will remain with KCP for the future, but their tour plans have not yet been announced, uh, obviously waiting on schedules before they make their decision. If I was a betting man, though, I'd say they probably stay outlaws on the shark racing front no changes for logan Schuhart, and the talk out there seems to indicate a full-time return to the seat for jacob allen he ran world finals and the season finale at baps back in the 1a there is some thought out there that maybe shark would split their teams one go outlaws and the other go high limit but i don't have any new information there that's something that's been talked about here uh, in the last maybe month or so and I've been asked a bunch about the future for Tanner Holmes, and I think things are still being worked on for him. A third shark car could be a potential landing spot. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. We already knew Donnie Schatz plans on being back in the Tony Stewart Racing 15. He talked about that to Jeremy Elliott back around World Finals, although touring plans haven't been shared publicly. I'd be surprised, though, if this car flipped to high limit for next season. Going further down the order, the rumors have been rampant about Sheldon Hoddenshield's future with the Stenhouse Junior Marshall 17. I've heard he's in, I've heard he's out, but my money is on him sticking around for another year. Struggles aside, uh, this past season, he's a massive fan favorite, does well with enough sponsorship, still one of the most exciting sprint car drivers uh, when things are going right for him. We know Spencer Basin will return uh, to the CJB5, but as I've talked about previously, I think they're a real candidate to go high limit. And I think that'd be a solid pickup for Brad and Kyle as they look to fill out that high limit roster. Brock Zierfoss is back with the Outlaws in 2024, driving his family car. He had already previously announced that. We talked about last uh, talked last week about his hopes for a stronger engine program next year so that they can work their way up the standings. As we get uh, down the order for the Outlaws, next up is James McFadden. Over the winter, he's heading home to run that Napa Auto Parts 5D car uh, that he raced uh, a year ago. And his first race will be December 16th at Warrnambool. Uh, it sounds as though Roth Motorsports will run two cars again next season with help from Toyota. And I expect McFadden and Buddy Kofoy to be back in those 283s. No word on their touring plans yet, but I'd be surprised if at least one car didn't go full-time Outlaws. As for Robbie Price and Noah Gass, I don't know their situations. Price was on Race Time Radio here recently and told the guys there his plans were wide open, uh, kind of past the Chili Bowl. This comes after nearly two seasons on the road with the Outlaws and the Sides Motorsports 7S. And I haven't heard yet what Gass is going to do for 2024. Uh, looking at some teams outside of the Outlaws, Zeb Wise uh, will be back in the Rudine 26 with that Ford Power. They have signed on with Ford for the full season. This one feels like a clear high limit team. Uh, team owner Kevin Rudine's big all-star event uh, is going high limit and his racetrack out in Washington, Skagit, flipping from Outlaws to high limit for next season. Uh, Wyndham's touring plans uh, with Vermeer weren't shared, so that's a question mark. And I don't know if that team would be prepared to make a West Coast trip. I don't know that we've seen them do that before, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. And while Tyler Courtney was involved in a lot of rumors uh, here towards the end of the season, my guess is a return to the NOS 7BC next year. 
Outlaws or High Limit, though, might be a coin toss. I feel like I could see that team going either direction, and we know uh, that there has been talk in the past about them going full-time Outlaws. As for the uh, owner-driver teams, I'd expect much of the same for Brian Brown and Anthony Macri, pick and choose schedules, running where they want, uh, and and you know racing uh, across the country uh, pretty regularly like they have. But both Rico, uh, Rico Aber and Brett Marks could be candidates to go high limit. If I'm Brad Sweet, I'm pushing those two hard to sign on as they'd be both fan draws and serious competition would really help fill out that roster. Supposedly, Marks is considering it. And even though Rico already told Matt Weaver he will probably stay pick and choose, I could see a scenario where he goes full time. Uh, drop me a comment below. Let me know uh, what other teams or drivers you might be curious about. Uh, and we'll see what we can find out about other futures. Amher said last night the USAC National Midgets were in action and we now officially have a series champion. By just rolling out for the feature, Logan Seavey was guaranteed enough points to lock up his second career midget title. His first came back in 2018 and this year he grabbed not only the midget crown but also the silver crown championship. According to USAC's Richie Murray, he's the first driver since Levi Jones in 2011 to earn two national championships in one season. Stevie got 30 grand for the midget championship, another 20 grand for the silver crown title, and thanks to USAC's championship program, he doubles that total amount to make it an even 100 grand for winning two of the three. Very nice payday there. When the deal was announced for Stevie to join Abacus Racing, I don't know how many people really considered them a title threat, but since Indiana Midget Week, they have been absolutely on fire. A top five last night takes them to 20 straight top 10 finishes, of which seven are wins, 16 are podiums, and 19 are top fives. Incredible stuff from that team and a well-deserved championship. As for the race itself, I don't want to say I told you so, but the two names I mentioned yesterday as guys to watch uh, both ended up out front. Spencer Baston leading all 30 laps for the win and Buddy Kofoid finishing second. It was Baston's first national midget win since 2018. He started on the pole and had a brief early battle with Gavin Miller, but the night ended pretty quick for Miller with a massive flip down the backstretch after catching the outside wall. I think that was on lap two. He was able to walk to the ambulance afterwards, though. I'm sure he will uh, be a little sore today after that one. Basin was never challenged again out front. Tanner Carrick joined Basin and Kofoid on the night's podium. Looking ahead to action tonight, they will do it all over again at Merced with 360 sprint cars joining the midget. That sprint car show should be a fun one and draw a lot of the California regulars. Uh, regulars. It will be live again over on Flow Racing. Uh, later this week, when the USAC Midgets head to Ventura for Turkey Night, Kyle Larson will be back in the field. He swept the Hangtown 100 at Placerville and will be back in his 1K machine to compete on Saturday night. I've been asked if this was going to happen, and I honestly didn't know uh, officially. I kind of felt like maybe it was possible uh, with he and Paul Silva rolling the midget back out. You figure they wouldn't do it for just one weekend. Friday at Ventura is just a practice night, and then Saturday will culminate in the 98-lap feature. A year ago, Larson was hard charger at Turkey Night, running through the field to finish second uh, behind winner Justin Grant. Uh, Young Money started 22nd in that race. Uh, he also had a top five there in 2021, finishing fourth. At last check, USAC had a prelim entry list for Turkey Night that is 54 cars strong. You'll get all the USAC regulars, plus the names we've seen so far out west, including Buddy Kofoid, Carson Macedo, Spencer Bast, and Tanner Thorson. Corey Day will be back in the Willie Kane midget as well after they struggled a bit at Placerville. 21st in the prelim Friday and a 25th in the 100 lapper after starting on the Sunday poll. I'll be curious to see, too, what Ricky Lewis can do in Cruz Pedregon's car. He's not a guy we see make a lot of midget starts. His last actual USAC midget appearance was at Turkey Bowl in 20, or Tur uh, Turkey Night in 2021. But he was, I believe, the winningest non-wing sprint car driver this season. He had 17 victories in 67 races. Six of those were boss wins, four with the Great Lakes Series, plus others with MSCS War and the USAC CRA. Uh, in other midget news, we know that Tyler Courtney will return to the Chili Bowl in 2024. This was announced here within the last several days or a week or so. He missed the 2023 Chili Bowl, deciding to instead race a sprint car down under for Monty Motorsports. He'll return to Tulsa this year with a NOS Energy Drink sponsored midget out of the Abacus Racing Stable. Abacus, like we just talked about, is the team that Logan CV has been running with all year in uh, USAC competition. CV did win the 2023 Chili Bowl, driving for Kevin and Jordan Swindell, and I would assume this means CV will be back in that car, hence leaving the Abacus ride open for someone else. Courtney has six career main event starts in his 11 Chili Bowl appearances. He had a best finish of sixth, which he did twice in 2017 and 2019. Uh, he was most recently 11th in the Big Show in 2022 after finishing second on his prelim night. Sunshine will also race during the Tulsa shootout in December, driving in winged and non-wing outlaw for Christopher Bell. Seabell's dirt racing exploits remain locked up, uh, so instead of driving, he's fielding cars for other guys. It's been a few years since we saw Courtney at the shootout.
Uh, we'll just keep this open wheel non-wing uh, news fest here rolling. On Tuesday, regular sprint car competitor Kyle Cummins announced he was leaving the seat of the Rock City Racing 3R sprint car after seven years together. Cummins ended the USAC National Sprint Car season seventh in the standings, even though he didn't run all of the races. He had seven sprint car wins this year, including four with USAC and three with the MSCS. Over the past four years, only Justin Grant, Brady Bacon, and CJ Leary have more USAC National wins than does Cummins. There's no word yet on who could replace him, and the release said that a, quote, exciting opportunity awaits and that more details will be released soon for Cummins himself. If you want to check out some other dirt racing content this week while you do some Turkey Day stuff, Passing Points has Johnny Kent. Dunwich on Dirt has Rod Tucker. The Turn 2 Terribles have Brett Strickler. Across the Groove has Corey Day. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks, and Dirt Track Confessions. To see all of the shows and all of the episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Well, that's it for the show today. You will get a Thursday episode this week. I've got something fun planned, barring any massive breaking news uh, here in the next 24 hours or so. So don't worry, we are uh, not taking the holiday off. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.